Thanks, Victor. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming today. Uh, my name is Scott Baptist. The reason that we have uh, requested the presence of the media today at police headquarters is to detail for you the efforts of a project that has been ongoing for the last uh, several uh, months uh, with respect to a very prolific uh, break and enter suspect that has been active in the city of Toronto in, and in York region. Uh, a break in the case came on January 31st when the suspect was arrested uh, and was alleged to be in possession of stolen property. This uh, investigation has been the fruit of the cooperation of multiple divisions within Community Safety Command of Toronto Police, uh, including 22 Division, 13, di pardon me, 13 Division, 53 Division, and 32 Division, and alleges uh, literally hundreds of entries. We are joined today as well by our, our partners from the York Regional Police, as uh, literally dozens of entries have occurred in the York region as well. And today we have with us Inspector Maria Ahrens and Detective Sergeant Don Cortwell, who have joined us today to assist us. Don? Yeah, so let's have us uh, get into the investigative details. I just want to thank uh, Metro Toronto Police for the cooperative effort in this investigation. Also want to thank uh, some members from my unit, Jason Curry, Mark Blacker and um, Mike Godber, three dedicated officers who spent months investigating this individual. Without the cooperation and communication with York Regional Police and Metro Toronto Police, we wouldn't be here today. So again, I just want to emphasize uh, the fact that uh, it was great teamwork between the districts and with the New York Regional Police. And I'll let Savas get into the details of the investigation. Thanks, Don. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of today's, uh, of bringing you all here today is to detail for you some of the details of this investigation and to ensure that we get the property that has been seized in these entries uh, as a result of a number of search warrants back to the rightful owners. So to detail the uh, investigation, I'll turn it over to Detective Sergeant Savas Kiriako of 13 Division CIB. Savas. Thank you, Superintendent. And um, thank you. Uh, for attending, and uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge our partners, uh, myself, um, uh, York Region Police, uh, and uh, various divisions uh, in Toronto Police Service, 22, 32, 53. And um, the, um, sometime uh, commencing back in October of 2010 and continuing into uh, uh, January of 2014, uh, there have been a vast number of uh, break and enters into a lot of uh, high end homes. Uh, the homes spread uh, throughout GTA, the areas of Vaughan, uh, City of Vaughan, and uh, Richmond Hill. It is alleged that uh, Mr. Gagnon, Shane Gagnon, who is uh, from Bradford in that uh, West Quillenbury area of uh, Ontario. used an array of uh, very sophisticated equipment, uh, including um, cameras, spy cameras, uh, parabolic listening devices, uh, breaking instruments, uh, such as you see in front of you, ropes, and uh, he gained entry into the homes uh, in a lot of those areas by climbing onto the roof, uh, cutting a hole through the, um, the roof, lowering himself into the attic and from there into the room. Thereby, he was bypassing a lot of the um, uh, alarm systems that were uh, installed at the homes. As we looked at uh, um, a lot of those occurrences, uh, it became apparent to us uh, that uh, they had a lot of uh, things in common. There were similarities that uh, we noticed. Um, and. Um, we commenced the investigation, uh, again, a, involving the several divisions. And uh, on uh, January 31st, uh, Mr. Gagnon was arrested by personnel from uh, 22 Division uh, following a short uh, pursuit. At the time of his arrest, he was in possession of a large number of um, uh, stolen items, including a vast array of watches, uh, jewelry, and uh, quite a bit of cash. There were subsequent uh, search warrants that were executed at some locations that uh, were associated to Mr. Gagnon, 
and uh, further equipment and jewelry, stolen jewelry uh, was recovered. Uh, if I can direct your attention to some of the equipment that was used, uh, as I indicated, the rope uh, was uh, used to, to climb, and as you can see, the, the notches there are the uh, um, uh, areas that uh, he tied in for uh, using to put his feet to lower himself and, uh, and escape through the attic. Uh, some of the other equipment there uh, as a parabolic um, listening device. Uh, again, he would be able to uh, listen on the outside before he could uh, uh, gain the entry. Um, we're appealing to all the victims of break and enters uh, to uh, please um, give us a call, and I'm going to provide you with uh, a phone number and uh, a website as well as an email address that uh, you can uh, contact us. We will have, uh, we'll take your name, number, and we'll have one of our investigators that'll be uh, calling you back to uh, follow up with that. The uh, phone number that uh, they can call is 416-808-3219. The uh, address, the uh, web address, it's uh, tps.to backslash Spiderman. The email address is gagnon, G-A-G-N-O-N dot 32 division at torontopolice.on.ca. We will provide that uh, as well on the uh, press release. Uh, before I conclude, um, I would like to um, just spend a couple of minutes to uh, give the people, general public, some uh, crime prevention tips uh, that might help, hopefully, in the future to avert some of these um, uh, these types of occurrences from happening. Uh, please remove items from around the home that provide access to second floors, second floor windows or the roof. Don't leave any ladders out in the backyards. Please make sure that they're secured in a garage. Lighting is very important. Uh, ensure that there's uh, motion detectors that are installed on the perimeter of the uh, home. Sliding doors. It's another area where uh, people uh, easily access. Uh, they can be very easily removed from the track. Uh, we can avoid that by putting a bar right across the uh, track and also put a, a, pin, um, a lock pin into the door. If you have an alarm system, please use it, especially when you go to sleep. And again, be aware of any persons or vehicles that are uh, in the neighborhood, suspicious, make a call to the police right away. And uh, obviously, good neighbors uh, watching each other makes for a safer and uh, more secure community. Uh, if you have any questions, I can answer them now. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the suspect? I'm sorry? The suspect. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Uh, the suspect is, uh, his uh, name is uh, Shane Gagnon. Gagnon is G-A-G-N-O-N. He's 43 years of age, and he resided in Bradford, Ontario. How was he caught? He was caught driving a vehicle by uh, 22 Division personnel. There was a short pursuit, and he was arrested at the time. And he allegedly just broken into a home? Do you think he was about to? No, it, was, um, it wasn't quite as, <laughs> as nice as that, but uh, it was, uh, there were a couple of young police officers uh, conducting observations uh, at a traffic point, and uh, it is uh, allegedly that Mr. Gagnon uh, committed uh, an offense against the Highway Traffic Act. Uh, there was a short pursuit following that, and he was arrested. What if that sophisticated B&E artist is caught because he, what, ran a red light or was driving too fast? Yes. What did he do? <laughs> Run a red light? What was the offense? Uh, I believe it was a stop sign. Oh, the irony is right. And so, and so they, they stopped him and they found, tell us what happened what, during the traffic stop. Uh, following his arrest uh, for dangerous driving, um, uh, the officers located uh, large amounts of jewelry that is allegedly stolen. Have you ever seen a sophisticated, prolific b and &E artist quite like this before who's using this type of equipment? No, he's probably one of the most sophisticated, prolific, uh, Persons, uh, in general, uh, the uh, the people that uh, do commit these types of offenses uh, are are not as 
uh, sophisticated. They don't have the equipment that he has. Uh, Mr. Gagnon had the uh, physical ability. He had the, uh, he prepared himself, and obviously he, uh, he had the equipment to uh, commit these offenses uh, over the years. How much money do you think is involved in terms of stolen goods? Do you have any idea? Are we talking millions? I would estimate, and this is probably just the tip of the iceberg, what you're seeing before you right now. Uh, and uh, looking at some of the uh, items that are displayed, uh, I would estimate that it would be in the, in the millions. In millions. Yes. So what would a watch here, what would be the most expensive item that you retrieved? Um, well, I, I'm not very uh, versed on my prices for uh, some of these items, but uh, as you can see, there are some uh, Cartier watches there, Rolex watches, and I believe that those watches are uh, substantially uh, expensive. When their homes are broken into? Uh, majority of the victims were not at home. And I can say that uh, a lot of the uh, break and enters occurred during the time of um, uh, the high holidays and Christmas time uh, when people were either away or uh, synagogue or church. Uh, and again, it comes down to people being able to uh, uh, take some measures, uh, for instance, uh, if you're going to go on holidays, make, make sure you have someone clean your sidewalk or your driveway. Uh, those are, are fairly good signs for people that want to commit this type of crime that nobody's home. Any idea how long he allegedly had been committing these crimes? We're yeah. estimating at least two, uh, three years. At least three years. The other aspect of this story is what did he do with all of this? Who is he selling it to to make a profit? How easy is it for somebody to fence this stuff? This is something that we're going to be following up as part of our investigation. It is an ongoing investigation, and we're far from finished. So, uh, you, you only have to answer that question. Sure, absolutely. Through our investigation, we have identified some jewelers where he is pawning the uh, property in the city of Vaughan, and have been told that he's getting 30 cents on the dollar for, the, for selling the products. But uh, some of the jewelers have commented that he knew the jewelry better than the jeweler themselves, right? So he's been in this business for a long time. Can the jewelers face any? That's something we're looking at currently right now, yes. How many, so somebody said 100 or hundreds of break and enters you're looking at for this guy? Yes, we are looking into a number of occurrences. And again, this is uh, another uh, uh, aspect of, uh, of why we're having this uh, uh, media release today is we would like for people to come forward, identify those uh, items that might belong to them, and hopefully we can uh, not only return it to, uh, to the owners, but again, tie in that, uh, that break and enter to them. So how many is he actually officially accused of, and how many do you believe, like how many charges do you think he may face down the road? Right now we have, he's been charged with 31 break and enters, but we are looking into uh, a large uh, number of uh, additional occurrences. How many? Uh, in excess of 100. So he's 43. With anybody. What else did he do for a living? Does he have priors? Did he have a, a different career? Is there anything more you can tell us about him? Um, he was known to us, but I can't go any farther than that. Uh, and as far as uh, other work, uh, we're not uh, um, exactly sure if he had any other type of employment. Uh, he did uh, double some, sometimes into metal work, but we're not sure if that was uh, a source of income for him. Do you know if Mr. Gagnon was working? I'm sorry? What parts of the city did he target? The city, uh, the parts of the city that he targeted were for still area, uh, fairly affluent neighborhoods, uh, areas in Vaughan, the city of Vaughan, and uh, Richmond Hill. What about the local where he was, uh, where this traffic Yes, that, that is uh, part of our ongoing investigation to uh, see if there had been any occurrences from there that could be associated to him. And, and where he, does he have any assistance? We're not sure. Again, this is something we're going to be following up with. And now, where, where, was, where was he arrested? Was it in Etobicoke or did he have a major intersection? Yes, it was in Etobicoke. Where was it? Near, near Lakeshore. Lake Sharon and what? Just so we can go there and say this is where 20 bright-eyed 22 division officers <laughs> yeah. brought this prolific alleged robber right. down. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the exact address, but I will get that for you. Okay. Yeah. What is nationality of the name? I'm sorry. Nationality, because his name sounds like Asian name. 
Gang Yon? Yeah. Uh, I believe actually Gang Yon is a, a name that he acquired later on. Uh, his original name, it, it's, um, and I'll spell it for you, it's Z, so Zerarik, it's spelled Z W E Z D A R A R Y K. I, I believe that was his birth uh, name, which was sub, uh, subsequently changed to uh, Gangyon. How long ago? Uh, we're not sure exactly how long, but uh, it is uh, five, six years ago, I believe. I, I don't have like, the exact date. He sounds like quite the con artist. <laughs> you might have that right. <laughs> <laughs> He had several homes, oh. <laughs> and we believe that uh, he was in the process, uh, along with his uh, uh, common-law wife, in opening up a restaurant. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was in Bradford. What's the name of the restaurant? I am like, not sure. Does it exist? Is there a building there that we could go and get a shot of? I'm not going to name the restaurant, but there is a business that it does exist. What kind of restaurant can you say? <laughs> I'm not going to get a detail, a small town. So. But any uh, high-end restaurant or a Chuck E. Cheese? I mean, no, it's a middle, middle class restaurant. Okay. Would his common law wife be facing any charges? Does he have, are you considering the possibility he has an accomplice? No, to our knowledge, she wasn't involved. She's a stay-at-home mom. Uh, and no idea this is what her boyfriend is doing? Well, I'm not going to get into details, but I'd say she probably was aware of what he was doing. He bought a lot of jewelry for Christmas? Heart <laughs> <laughs> chain, roll that, that's yeah. what's um, How old is he? So he's a father? Father of two years. How, how old are the children? I'm not sure exactly. Young children? Yes, young children. Can you say how he was uh, regarded in the community, perhaps? I mean, this is a guy that's open, a, a family man by the sounds of it, opening up a restaurant. And was he living two different lives, would you say? Like, talk to us about that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as, as we said, this is an ongoing investigation. And, and what our purpose today is, is to bring us back to the property and for us to try to make sure that we can get the public coming to this website and making the phone calls to this phone number if they believe they may have been a target of one of these break and enters and that some of their property might be in our possession, our goal today is to get that property back to the rightful owners and to do our job as far as customer service with the people of Toronto and the people of York Region. So if you could please help us get that message that we'd be sincerely in your debt. Do you have more than what's on display here? Yes. Yes, there is more, there is more property than this. There's a lot more to double? This is a... This is a sample of the property that's been seized, yes. But everything's on that website? Uh, yes, we are working on that. There is a, it's an ongoing process. It's a substantial amount of work to get all of this cataloged and get this uploaded, and we're in the process of doing that. And we have a, a great majority of it already on there. So please uh, refer to the website and refer to the phone number. So It was, it's one of these things where it, it's an investigation that is ongoing. And as has been said by Detective Sergeant Kiriakou, this, this uh, was a break in the case with this vehicle stop that uh, this, uh, this person was in possession of this property. So from that point on, the, uh, the need to bring this investigation together, have multiple investigators from multiple jurisdictions come together, realize that there's a similar uh, modus operandi to pull this together, that is something that takes time and effort and, and the ability of these officers to work together. And, and I think they need to really have a pat on the back. Our, uh, our officers and our major crime officers have really come together to do this. Were all 31 charges laid at once, or have there been multiple informations? Or has the information been changing as the month? The information has been changing as we go along. So he was initially charged with how many? Six. Six, and then added? There's been two additional uh, uh, sessions where additional charges have been laid. Yes. So can you give us an idea of how many items you've seized and the, and the uh, type of items? Like I bought a watch. This is garbage. a good. This is an excellent sample of it. A lot of it is jewelry, etc. And uh, if, if, as far as more detail, please refer to the website and, and call in because this is one of the things where people are going to be coming forward, and we're going to be trying to do their very, very best to get property back to the rightful owner. As you can see, there's this. This is a sample. There are literally hundreds of items. Thank you very much. We appreciate you coming today. Thank you.